This is my first tutorial on how to create music within a virtual program or application. I'm using FL Studio 10 and a few external programs, but uh, I will mainly do FL Studio for the first few uh, episodes, tutorials and uh, get to the external stuff if you want to have it later. This is the full version of FL Studio. This is uh, the producer edition. So I do have an amount of plugins that you may or may not have, and I will not be using them until a later tutorial. Not mainly which type of um, plugins, but rather uh, how to use them and uh, add them to uh, different patterns and such. But right now, this is the first episode, and we're going to... We're going to focus on getting to know your program and getting familiar where uh, stuff is. So, uh, normally when you start at the program, of course, you're not going to have my background. The background is a part of my personal thing. If you want a background, uh, I'm pretty sure I can find a location where you get it from. Uh, you go to View... Yes, you go to View, and then you go down to the board that says Background, and then sit Bitmap Wallpaper. From there, you can select uh, any kind of uh, picture you want, and it will appear in the background. For example, this. So that is how simple way if you want to customize it to make your make it your own. And I'm sure that uh, you'd want to do that to get the uh, dull background gray background out of the way. As for a number of things I've already customized, I'll point out to you how to change them and such if you want to customize it to your liking. Um, the first thing we want to figure out how to do is to get familiar where the buttons are and what everything means. Overlooking the program, you can tell there are very many buttons and very many uh, switches and stuff that could do a lot of stuff. Only uh, from up here, yours might be uh, positioned differently. If you want to move it to be like mine, you can. How to move it is uh, mine's on lock, but how to move it is on the left side on every panel you can see they're all cut you can move them amongst any way you want and drag it wherever you want to, want to put them I have them set like this because I find it to be the most beneficial to me and uh, I don't want everyone to move it because sometimes when I click stuff I accidentally drag and mess a bunch of stuff up so I hit lock and that uh, stops it from being able to be moved to uh, any other area now very basic buttons you want to get familiar with especially with uh, most other programs that are a lot different in this one is the close maximize minimize and exit I think it's yeah it's exit I think I'm not sure buttons they're normally in this corner where they are the normal color if I open up notepad you'll see how does that open like that you'll see the buttons up here that's what we're all used to in Windows 7 but uh, you'll notice they're not up there at all. In fact, they're right here. They're in a weird position, I know, but I think you can move this as well. You can drag it from this side and move it anywhere you want. So if you do want this back over here, but that'll also move everything in this direction, everything, file, edit, channels, view, options, tools, and help will all move in the same area that you put it, along with uh, the main master volume and the master pitch, and any other mini buttons that you may find in this area. But I find it better over here because I'm used to seeing file over here and you just get used to where that's uh, located in that direction if you want to uh, put it there. But uh, a couple main buttons to note, uh, the play, the stop, and uh, record function, which I will not be covering anytime soon. Uh, the record function anyway, the play and, pause, um, play and stop obviously will be uh, covering pretty, pretty often the pattern and song. I'll describe that more later and the tempo of the song and all. Of course, we all want to know how to activate tempo. We want to know how to go faster, slower, whatever you want the beat to be, or pattern, or loop. And uh, the pattern selector, this is just another way how we can select patterns if you don't have a mouse wheel, or if you're just too lazy to click a couple times. In here is a couple other settings you can have, like uh, configure typing keyboard to piano, as in every uh, key on your keyboard from Q to M will do a different key depending on the pitch. I think Q is the highest and M will be the lowest you can do, but it's not all the pitches you can do, so you have a lot more. It's just the basic form of the uh, uh, common used uh, selection of uh, pitches you can go through if you want to do a quick, uh, instead of going into a separate window and selecting each one to figure out what it sounds like, you can press a simple button and do it real quick. I like to have that off though, 
because I don't use it much. I will be using it a bit though to show you how it works and everything. And we got other stuff like scrolls to reach time markers, which is when you're inside of the playlist, when you've uh, placed your patterns and stuff. Uh, when you press play, a uh, little bar will go across the screen showing you what's being played at that time. And uh, normally it goes off screen and it's, you still only can see what you've placed. And with that on, you don't have to keep scrolling to find it. It'll automatically uh, scroll itself to it so you don't have to worry about it. Those are just some extra uh, internal buttons and uh, stuff that I don't use much. The only one I'd probably use is the auto scroll and uh, metronome. Very rarely the metronome though, because I've gotten used to how this works. Anyway, here one of the main buttons you'll probably ever use. Yes, there are shortcuts. You can see at the bottom right of my screen I have a help a help uh, bar, I, am, I guess I can call it, that shows wherever you have, uh, hover over something. It'll tell you what it is and the shortcut if it, if it has one. And if you want to enable that, because I'm pretty sure you don't have it, uh, it's an options. And... I'm sorry. It's in... It's in view, I think. Yeah. It's in view. Go to view, toolbars, and you'll see hint bar. Yeah, click that, and then this will pop up, which just disappeared. Okay, that will pop up, and the only way that could be dragged, I can't drag it now, and I feel stupid because I forgot. The only way to have it dragged is for one to have lock mode off, and then on the right side, there's a little circle, and in the middle, you'll see your uh, moving cursor. That's how you can move it anywhere you want, so maybe you're comfortable with it up there. Of course, you can't see it all. You know, you can move it anywhere you want. I personally really love it down here because it's out of the way, but it's just to the point where I can see what stuff does. And of course, I always lock. And you can oh, and you can also access the hint bar from here too. I wasn't paying attention. I'm sorry. So you can right click up here and go to hint bar, or you can go to view and then toolbars and then enable from there. I like it have a lock so that way it can't be moved. The little cursor is not showing up. That is my perspective though. Here we got the news thing of uh, you know the date everything that's going on. I don't... tell you the truth, I don't think I really need that bar, but it's been there for so long I can't seem to start the program without seeing that because it confuses me. So I keep it on there. Here's some extra stuff like undo, save, if you want to do a quick save from here instead of going to file and all that. Uh, instead of going from there, you can go to yeah, renders an audio file, open a new audio editor, your project and help and you know about all the all the stuff you'd find on another program. Here's uh, where you'll find your CPU usage that the uh, program has currently been using. As you can see, mine is extremely low and there's no bars at all because I haven't done anything. If I, when we start the actual tutorials in the next episode, you will uh, uh, you know tutorial episode whatever, you will see this bar fluctuate and this go up and down because it's showing you how much CPU and how much RAM is being produced in it. Uh, to you know to figure that out okay and here you will find the monitor but it's only available in the master's edition I'm pretty sure it's only available in the master edition I'm not entirely sure because I bought this right off the bat because I knew what it was I wasn't really paying attention it says master I'm not sure if that means you need the master's edition I have the producers but apparently I can use it so maybe I'm wrong don't quote me quite, but I'm sure you will be able to use it in a tutorial if you're using a tutorial. But note, if you're using the tutorial, you will not be able. You can save your files, but you will not be able to reopen them. So the best, <clears throat> the best bet you have is to try out the tutorial, see if you like the program, watch my tutorials, figure out if if you're if you're truly into it, and if you are, then go ahead and buy it. I'm pretty sure the uh, the basic edition, which I think is under producer, is about forty to sixty bucks very cheap for a piece of software such as this and I find it very quite beneficial I spent a thousand dollars or more I think a bit more because I, I paid for all the plugins uh, as you can see all these plugins I bought all the extra plugins because I used most of them I think there's only two of them I regret buying but they were only like 20 40 bucks and it didn't really matter too much to me at the time but uh, overall you got your basic things here and uh, this is the time for how long your song's been going and the basic step. I believe this is a millisecond, and I'm sure... I believe that is a millisecond, and that is a... Whatever's smaller than a millisecond, I'm not entirely sure. But I, I've, I know that this will increase and fluctuate as you go through a song. And, and throughout how you edit it. All of these things can be right-clicked to open, or left-clicked to open, as you can see. And uh, 
basically everything can be open via left click basic stuff of, uh, of a computer function but uh, a couple of things can have uh, additional properties like the tempo you can auto snap to a specific tempo instead of having to hold on it and drag or use your mouse wheel on it so there are a few things you can uh, do uh, left cl uh, right click on I mean instead of uh, figuring out where you know to do it manually that's all that's all in the future of uh, what things actually do so uh, in the next episode I'll be explaining how to access sounds and instruments and how to place them into a, a, a what's called a step sequencer to create a loop so until next time